<laughs> sure, okay, date nights DC. You guys have seen me on dates with Dan. If you are looking for romantic ideas, fun idea, date nights DC.org. Take a listen to this. Date nights DC shines a light on the romantic side of the nation's capital, and I am all about romance. You can find great restaurants, museums, hotels, and more. Do date night right in DC. Visit their website for more info at date nights DC.org. And DC Lottery has just launched their new DC Love Scratcher. You could win up to $50,000, and it's being sold through June. Take a listen. Let's show them some DC love, some DC love. Guys, you know I'm all about DC. I love our city. What better way to celebrate than with DC Lottery and their new DC Love Scratcher? Available now, February through June. Pick yours up wherever lottery is sold, $5 and up to $50,000 top prize. Go to their website too, dclottery.com. All right, Paul Wharton. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. There's a volume. Hey, praise. What's the phrase that you hear? There we go. There we go. Tune in. Tune in. Sarah Frazier on the mic and she about to begin the co host with the most Paul Warren looking fleek. Take it from me, you should be listening. Live from the nation's cap, pop culture at its best. No need a second guess. Separated from the rest. Entertaining nonetheless. Many topics to address. There is just a little bit of a you guys, Ooh. welcome to the podcast. I'm Sarah Frazier along with the fabulous Paul Wharton. Paul is back, by the yes, way. Yes, I am. It's good to see you, kid. Good to see you, too. We are um, experimenting. We, we won't, like, say too much, but essentially okay. we are experimenting with a new podcast studio. Yes, okay? we like, are. And, and launching a show and all these cool things. So we're kind of working on the technical difficulties today. So I hope this sounds amazing. Well, as someone that's just back from L.A., I got to say this is very Hollywood. Really? This is very Hollywood, Sarah. I heard a rumor, by the way, that you're thinking about moving there. No, I'm thinking about getting a place. So nothing I say is sacred, huh? <laughs> we got to start with her already. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm thinking about getting a place in L.A. I don't want to interrupt you, but it's so funny now. I feel like I hear all about your life through AJ. <laughs> and you're going to hear it too. Yeah, and I hear all about yours. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Don't be trying to send no hearts through there. <laughs> Uh, by the way, you're going to be hearing and seeing AJ is the producer of the Hey Frage podcast. She is in studio. Uh, Leslie is here. Leslie's our videographer. They are both gorgeous. They are also on the mic, too. So we'll we'll hear more from them. But that's who you hear us reference. So, um, I know. Yeah, you can just come for everybody. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, wait. First of all, let me. Th- how was last week without me? Because I, I text you and told you that I was available to talk. Yes, and we were going to call you, but we recorded at noontime. Yeah. Then we were done. Then you wanted to call afternoon, and we tried you. I called you, and you didn't pick up. But you didn't tell me you were going to call. It w- must have went right to voicemail. You called from an 800 number. I don't answer those. Oh, <laughs> All those shoot. Nigerians trying to take my money? Mm-mm. 866, <laughs> nope. If I ain't paid you, you ain't going to get paid. Oh, shoot, I should have told you. You know what? I think it actually shows up as a 207 yeah. number. So that's yeah. probably why you didn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, so how was the show? Um, it was fine. We had a good time. I heard but you were missed. I heard that you were pissed off with me about your birthday. Wait, but I don't. I don't remember saying that I was mad. When you did that... said you didn't get so much as a text, a call, a, a pigeon with a, a letter, or nothing. You didn't get nothing. A, a nothing. <laughs> Did we say that on the podcast? I honestly don't remember. Yes, because I have my sister <laughs> listens and she reports back. She was like, watch that damn AJ. She <laughs> said you took your glam squad to New York, all two of them. I said the shade. She <laughs> said it wasn't like severe shade. It was like shade like on a tattoo. You know how the tattoo has shade behind oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Said, oh, the I get you, Holly. Oh, I get you. I said, I'm going to get her ass. I honestly don't remember, but I don't care. You know, yeah. I don't care about my birthday. Like, a lot of people, it went by and people were like, oh, why didn't you say anything? Well, because you don't a... say anything. Like, yeah, my birthday. I had a birthday. But you did say last week that I, that I missed your birthday. And, you know, I felt horrible about that. I didn't know it was your birthday. And I had just seen you. You don't talk about your birthday at all. So, it's, you know, and my birthday yeah. was just such a big birthday. And you know? I, I hope we were kidding. I need to go back and listen because I, I really don't care. How do you feel, Sarah? I feel great. You feel good? Yeah. Okay, you know I and would never purposely miss your birthday. No, 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 no. And I think you're so good about always, like for you, when you had your bir- birthday yeah. this year, it was really important. You yeah. had a party. You mm-hmm. wanted everyone to be there. And we all did that. And I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't care. 
<laughs> like, I just didn't really care. Well, happy birthday, well, honey. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope I didn't sound like I was mad on the podcast. No, cause... no, no. I just, I would never want you to feel that I would knowingly, you know, know it was your birthday and not say anything. I mean, I I found out like everybody else, you know, yeah, on social. Yeah, day like, of. Wait a minute. <laughs> No, after. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, don't worry at all. But so, it yeah. was it was a quiet show without you. We okay. managed, um, and we of course talked about the launch of Black Panther. So we had a special okay. guest, um, this Hillary Younger, who is a former reality show star, who you actually might know. She was on Design Star. Interesting. So Very interesting. She came on to talk about what people were wearing for Black Panther, and the big thing was, I thought. I legitimately thought as a white person I could dress up. Sure. But I guess you're not supposed to. Well, I mean, I've seen on social media, there's a guy that I follow, and he's a white guy that dates black girls, and he wore his, like, kente cloth. And, I mean, he had his He had his uh, black power fist up. I was like, go, brother. Nobody gave him any hate. So I guess you have to be dating a black person to wear your oh, that, you know, okay. Wakanda tribe vibe. Well, that would have, okay, I should have, eh, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just a theory. <laughs> That was a good theory. <laughs> I don't know if it makes any sense. So anyway, that was all that was going on. You are back. We are dying to hear yes. because many, many people were tweeting and wanted to know yeah. about your appearance on Watch What Happens Live. Right. So we need to discuss that. I was in Philadelphia over the weekend with a girlfriend who just got divorced from her husband. And okay. her husband is now engaged to another woman. And she wants to know if she can ask her husband details about, well, ex-husband, details about their engagement. Why? Why would she want to know? Why would she want to put herself through that? She's a nosy bitch like we all are. I think you. she wants to know who the woman is, and she wants to know like how long that they've been engaged because they literally got divorced in December. Okay. They got divorced in December of 2017, and now he's engaged to another woman. So, And, and they had been living apart for a couple of years, so okay. it's not like she can say, like, oh, they, he just moved out or whatever. I think she should move on. I, I think she should accept it and move on. If she wanted him, she would have kept him. No, I'm kind of with you. I'm really you know? with you. But she's actually thinking about texting him and just like saying congratulations and who's the woman and when's the big day. Like, do you think that's too much or is that just looking friendly? When's the big day? Oh, God, honey. No. I mean, <laughs> why would you want to do that to yourself? I'll tell you more about that trip. And we okay. have so many stories to get to. I really want to know, have you heard about this guy that's out in the Midwest in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who several years ago, he's like in his 80s now, and supposedly he's a millionaire, and he put together a treasure, treasure chest of gold gold coins, hid them somewhere in the desert, and has been doing an online blog, like a so-called treasure map. Okay. And three people have died. A guy just died about six oh, months Jesus. ago, searching for this $2 million worth of treasure. Okay, oh, that's no. in this. But then there's some doubts if it's even real, if it's not. And I want to know if you think this guy, if it's time that this guy is either forced to admit if this is real or not, or has some liability for these people's deaths. Because they go out in search of this treasure... And then they die. They fall off cliffs. Oh, they God. starve to death. All this stuff in so-called search of treasure that hasn't been found. So yeah, just people are dying, yeah. Think about that okay. one. Yeah. We have to talk about that. Today, there's uh, nationwide walkouts by students and teachers um, in light of Parkland, Florida. The That massacre happened last week after we were done the podcast. So I want to know your thoughts on gun control. We'll touch on that a little bit. Okay. Um, and then also to the guy that's come on to Tinder, and he's done a PowerPoint presentation of why you should date him. And I want to okay. see if this would ever work for you. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think it would, but I'm open. I mean, shit. <laughs> you know? Are you on Tinder, by the way? I you, am. Oh, you do Tinder? Okay. I do. You know what I do? I swipe in other cities. Like, if I'm visiting, oh, good idea. If I'm visiting like, um, California, I'll put, like, Beverly Hills a week before, and I'll line up a few little Tinderonis. <laughs> And then, like, I'm going to London in a couple of weeks, so I'm, I put in London, and I'll get some, like, little London boyfriends. And you know I'm working with the lady in Milan doing the leather jackets. You all know <gasps> I wear these leather yes. jackets, so I'm designing them now with um, Alessandro Grimaldi, honey, of Milan. So I, I swipe in Milan, because I need a Milan boyfriend. Oh, I forgot I have one. But <laughs> Wait, you have a boyfriend? Well, no, I have Renzo still. Oh, well, Re okay, well, Renzo. But, I mean, Renzo, are you guys, like, really committed not really. I mean, are you ever really committed to anyone? No. Do you know well, what I'm saying? I'm not. I mean, I'm on Tinder, and then the, the irony is- You are not is, on Tinder. Yes, I am. And people actually, because I've been doing this date nights thing, you know, for date nights DC. So I've actually had people message me, and they, they're they really genuinely confused. And on my profile, I say, host of the Hey Frage podcast, yeah. on here to read people's funny t Tinder profiles, right? Sure. That's full disclaimer. 
and yeah. follow me on Snapchat, right? Because I'd read somewhere that Logan Paul picked up all his Snapchat followers okay. from being on Tinder. Okay. And basically he just said, follow me on Snapchat. And then well, all these do people that. do that. Yes, go do it. Yeah. It works. It works. I mean, I don't know. I mean, now I just get men who basically are like, show me your tits. So like, I remember your your former co-host Ty used to be on um, Tinder yes. swiping on gay men. And I didn't like that. Well, because we did it for this bit. We used to have this mm-hmm. deep thoughts from the men on Tinder and deep thoughts from the Tinderellas. And we would read funny Tinder profiles, right? So we went on there to swipe. But but did Ty disclose that that's why he was there? No. Okay. I just recognized him from that. Well, so do you think he was tucking some of those little <laughs> Tinder notes away? What do you think? Was he on the DL? Um... I don't know. I mean, he seems metro, super. He? He's very metro. Yeah, but he seems so in love with his wife. Like oh. those, are, those are two people that are like well, deeply connected. Well, apparently, just being married to someone doesn't mean you have to be in love with them. Because I got a note the other day from Chuck's wife. <gasps> what? <laughs> uh oh, like good or bad? Uh, I'll let you be the judge. Okay, and by the way, for anybody that's just finding our show, discovering our show, so Paul ha- met this guy, like, serendipitous. He's Paul's at a bar. He's ready to walk out. Like, give us the really quick summary. Yeah, was- I mean, I, I, met, I met this guy. I mean, it was just very casual. We were at a bar, a hotel bar, which comes up in this message that she sent me. Um, and we just struck up a conversation, and the bar was closing early, and he invited me. Um, I, I had actually gone home. But he invited me to come back and go up to his room, and I did. And we had wine, and then we, you know, fooled around or whatever. And we had a fun time. I mean, I'm grown. And he basically said, I'm in an open relationship. Like, he disclosed that. Not then. The oh. next day he did. He didn't oh. disclose he was in anything, and he had no wedding ring on. Oh, my now, God. I'm now I'm gonna, nervous. My I hands cannot, are sweating. I cannot read you all of this. I am only going to let the people know that have been following this. So, basically, what ended up happening is... I thought that he had a girlfriend because I asked him the next, he said something about my lady the next day. And I said, oh, you have a girlfriend? He says, yeah, but we're in an open relationship. I said, oh, okay. Um, And then later when I couldn't find him on Instagram, AJ was like, what's his Instagram? I'm going to Insta stalk him. And I'm like, oh, I got to find out. So I asked him and he says, why would you want to know my Instagram? I'm a suburban breeder. And I'm like, well, I don't define breeder because I'm like, yeah, you what's know, that mean? When that I'm sounds watching to me. porn, that's like a whole different guy. <laughs> like, what does this mean to you? You know, <laughs> be specific. So um, he said, you know, I'm in a, I'm married, but I, we're open. You know, we have this open relationship. I said, okay, interesting. So apparently, not so open. Oh, no. Oh, God, Not so Paul. open. So he came out to, he told his wife, he had told her that he was, he thought he was bisexual. This is the week before. This, okay. this is this is last week. So like, like he just told her last week he thinks he's bisexual. Or- he just told her, and she she was apparently cool with it. And she says, okay, what does that mean to you? How do you see that playing out? And we can do this, and it's gonna work, and blah 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 blah. Anyway, he was feeling very close, and like he wanted to fully disclose everything to her. And he told her a few days later, yeah, and you know this book that you see around the house. He's got pulling it all together. Like what? All around the pulling house. Pulling it all together. Child, like in his the bathroom. baby is cutting his teeth on my damn corners uh, of my book. Oh, God. Okay, this is, oh, my God. So uh, he's like, I met that guy. You know, we, what, you know, and she's like, oh, you did? And what happened? And he said they were, like, being really close and intimate in this talk. And then he says, oh, well, you know, we fooled around. And she apparently lost her shit. She went crazy. Oh, my God. So anyway, in his defense, then he tells her, oh, um, he came up to the hallway and we had oral in the hallway. What the fuck? Wait a minute. I'm a public figure, sir. (laughs) Oral in the hallway. Oral is very popular. You know, Black China's oral video. I'm all a fan. And you're like really well endowed. I'd love to see that. Oral sex? sex as sex? Yes. Anytime you're putting a dick in a hole, I don't care okay. what it is. If you're fucking my ear, like ear hole, you, we're having sex. Well, like, let when me your start dicks you... out and there's moisture. It's sex. Okay. Let me start you out with this. I'm gonna just give you a little teaser, and then Paul, we're just gonna are have you to are you there. shitting your pants a little bit because I feel like you were really full disclosure with Chuck like from the start. Are you feeling a little like betrayed? Like you know, I'm saying like you because I can remember. Didn't you guys before you even hooked up, you had like a conversation with him? Like, is this okay? And remember, he asked you like, yeah, yeah. do you want me to leave? Like he no, seemed- I asked yeah, yeah, because I was like, are you? Because he seemed a little like inexperienced, right? And I was like, are you okay? Like, are you freaking out? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like you were full disclosure. So and I haven't had 
what well the, it turned out not to be a one night stand, but I haven't had a one night stand in so long. I've been actually looking for one because I wanted a little something to shake things up. Right, right. Because I remember the days I used to go to the bar. Oh, it was fantastic, and I would go out and I'd be so fabulous. My hair is curly and big, and I used to wear Dolce and Gabbana light blue fragrance everywhere. And I was just like smelling good, and I would go out and oh. I would see somebody across the bar, and they'd see me, and I'd be like, "Oh, this is hot." And then we would end up, you know, hooking up. And then I would like do the walk of shame. Love it. Home in the morning. It was fantastic. I was living in New York. I had a, the best life. But I haven't had a one night stand in a while. So I said, "Hey, Paul, listen. You just turned forty. Shake things up a little bit. Be open." Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Be open every now and again. <laughs> so I, I tried, and this is what happened. So I get this message. And it's apparently buried in my Facebook. Um, there's a part of your Facebook messages in Messenger where if the people aren't your friends, it's like way down at the bottom. It's okay. Just, yeah, yeah, all right. It's like filtered. I think that's what it's yes. called. Yes. Yeah, so, you have to, okay. I get this message and it says, is it often you suck other people's husbands off in hotel hallways or just mine? <laughs> it's apparently your M.O. to prey on vulnerable men away from their families. What other reason is there to hang out at a hotel bar in D.C. when you live in D.C.? Thanks for preying on my husband. <gasps> Thanks for ruining my life and my marriage. There's a special place in hell for you. What? Don't worry. I put your picture up on my fridge so my kids know who their second dad is when you start coming around. And I bet those kids will be like, wow, daddy's got a fabulous skin and hair. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. And then and she, she sent you a picture of the kids. That's so creepy. This is kind of creepy, right? Yes. So I won't go any further. Oh, my further God, because- Paul, what did you write back? Have you written back? <laughs> yes, this is better back. drama than anyone's ever had. So I write back because, first of all. Your kids could only be so blessed to look at that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't want him. <laughs> I don't want your husband. Like, and I wasn't trying to break up any marriage. He's the one that sent you all those te- text messages the last day. Oh, I've listened to the podcast. Oh, you know, oh, you're I'm sure beautiful. he's going to be listening to this. I'm sure. And I and I like him, and I and I hate that he's struggling with this. I right. Really, right I right. really do. But yeah, nobody knows sad. his real name, so hold on. Um, anyway. Chuck, this is really sad. Chuck, this is a moment for you. Yeah, I'll just claim her what? name is Melissa, okay? Okay, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. This is terribly unfortunate. I understand that you are hurt and that you and Chuck have had some communication differences about what constitutes an open relationship. I will share a few morsels of truth. Maybe it will help. I'm not sure. First off, no, I don't prey on people's husbands or boyfriends, and I've never sucked anyone off in a hallway. Maybe I have. <laughs> now that I can remember. <laughs> it's been a long, I had a lot of rocky drinks. road, yeah. girl. Can't yeah. quite remember, oh, but I mean, not whatever. in recent times. A blowjob's like a handshake. Oh, shit, fuck it. Yeah, who cares? Just close your eyes. You don't know if it's a man or a woman. Exactly. Mustache gives away. But- mm-hmm. I struck up a conversation with Chuck at the bar, and after having lots of laughs, he invited me up to hang and have a glass of wine. I hang out at hotel bars for martinis and food, and because I like to, not to pick people up. There was no intention to have a hookup. We were having a fun chat and the bar closed, so we figured, hey, what's the harm? I didn't know Chuck was married or in any relationship at that point. The interaction was lightly sexual. We chatted. It wasn't overly intimate. It was two guys hanging out. We messed around for a short while, and I went home. It honestly seemed like something a couple of teens that were just trying to figure themselves out would do. You gave her a lot of detail. You know what I'm you saying? You really set the scene there. Yeah, set you really the scene. did. Really like, oh, we're just two whimsical yeah. fellas in love. Couple and of guys yeah, rocking off. Yeah, I can just... circle jerk. What's the big deal? No reason to end a marriage over that. Oh. I remember thinking, for a gay guy, he's not very smooth. It harmed you, but it was relatively harmless and light. I haven't seen him since, but we struck up a friendship over text. I don't have any need to prey on guys. I'm successful and good looking. And in my world, that means it's not tough to find a mate or at least a hookup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's your choice. Who, that right. who wants you know, to keep him around? I could get it. Um, but I am also very compassionate, and the thought of hurting you leaves me feeling extremely uneasy. It goes against who I am as a person. I do not go around hurting people, and I don't believe Chuck does either. I came to find out after our interaction that Chuck was married with children, something that I'm sure was tough for him to share. And in an open relationship, I thought you knew that your husband was bi. I really did, and I thought you all were in agreement about your relationship being open. I've come to understand now that you didn't. 
I know that Chuck has struggled with these feelings for a long time, and I hope you both can work this out for the good of your marriage and your children. My 100% honest intention was to have a cool, fun friendship with Chuck. Meet you and us all be friends. Shit, what do I got to do? You know, yeah, do right. Well, you don't care. Yeah, he's a traveling sales guy. Exactly. Who, yeah, like, um, don't don't say okay. too much. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on now, I'm trying to keep it cute. Okay, I, won't I say am like, not <laughs> looking to take your husband or any person's husband. I'm not desperate, and I'm not easy. I know Chuck loves you very much, and I hope his God-given sexual orientation that he has apparently been struggling with for years won't end your marriage. Your children are beautiful. I wish them only the best as I do all of you. You can hate me if you really want to, but I absolutely did nothing to intentionally or unintentionally hurt you. Nothing. And as a friend of several people, young and older, that have taken their own lives over not feeling that they could share their true selves Mm. with their loved ones, I would just say, please find it in your heart to forgive Chuck and understand where he's coming from. This issue started from birth, long before you, and I am not even a factor. If I can help you work through this in a healthy way, I'm here. I wish you both all the best as you fix this and move forward with your lives. Wow. Okay. And did she respond oh, to that? Oh, it went on and on and on. She, so she did. She responded. Oh, so yeah. what was the resolution, basically? Or where are you guys at now? Oh, my God. Paul, that was like a lot. I need a cigarette. Do you have that champagne? <laughs> can you open that champagne now for real? AJ brought in some Prosecco. She's like, do did you guys have really? Prosecco? Yeah, we need yeah. it. Open oh, my that. God. We need like, oh, oh, are you, were you not like punched in the gut? I don't know. I would have been like nervous. <sighs> Because I've only ever received that once. I, I received some woman that was that basically was on Twitter telling me that I had an affair with her husband and ruined her life and her three kids. And well, I first the it. woman says I'm lying about Elmo. She tells me to go fuck myself. And now this. I mean, it's too much. Oh, well, welcome to the show. You I know mean, what I mean? Yeah. Social media. These people can access you so easily. So I, I will share her, her response to that, okay? Um, his being bi has zero to do with this. When he what? told me. Uh, that has everything to do with it. Yeah, then, okay. Uh, when he told me, I asked him how we could work it into our marriage and what he felt that looked like for him and for us. It has zero to do with what's in your pants. I want him to live a happy and authentic life, no matter what that means. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. And look, it so just... did you guys ever come to any common ground? Or she basically is arguing with you the whole way that, like, oh, you still shouldn't have done this, well, blah, blah, blah. The bottom then... line is the man is bisexual. You know, people, come on now. Oh, yeah, this yeah, This is yeah. what I tell my girlfriends. I mean, real talk here with me and the ladies on the other end. If you're listening, I'm going to share a little morsel with you. You know, these women, he tried to tell her years ago, like a lot of men try to tell their women. This is what and, Caitlyn Jenner said. And they try to tell you in different ways, do you know? And for the women that recognize that, and as soon as they see it coming or feel it coming, they're like, I can't be with no man and sucking no other man's dick. Fuck that. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know what they do? They clam up and they go to hotel bars and they invite guys up to their room and they whack off or whatever they do. I'm not giving any details. <laughs> have... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. What do you think that women... That's a tough one, though. Let How do them you think tell women... you what they're trying to say, even if it's uncomfortable for you, even if you have to be a great actress in receiving that, and then make your decision on what you're going to do. But don't Yikes. intimidate them into suppressing what they're going to tell you about themselves. And it usually happens earlier on in the relationship. So you think just listen. But but here's the thing. Don't you think this is really difficult for women? Let's say like like Chuck's wife, okay? They, they're they married. They have kids. Maybe he did try to tell her years ago that he was bisexual. <laughs> Oh, my God. Thank God. We need alcohol. Thank you. Um, And thanks, AJ. Cheers, Cheers honey. Oh, my God. <laughs> but then what should she do? Because here's the thing is, like, I think a lot of people aren't that open. Well, he told me that he said to her a long time ago, what if I were bisexual? Or, or could you be with a bisexual man? And she said, um, oh, absolutely not, or something. That wouldn't work for her. So this mm. was earlier on in the relationship. I mean, I see, I would have said my advice in that scenario is, well, I mean, why? What do you ask? Have you ever had an experience? Go with it, ladies. <laughs> Try to get to the truth. Yeah, right, no, no, right. get to the truth. That's and a then good you're point. not like, hell no. And then what? I know. You know what he did? He tucked it away. But it keeps coming up because that's who he is.
It's funny you say that because we last week on the show we did talk about the ten things that men supposedly want in bed from real men, and like one of them was like butt play. Like a lot of guys are into that, and I actually had a guy write to me and say that he's really into that. But it's so hard with women because so many women, the minute you bring it up, are like, "Oh, you're gay!" Like, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, really? People don't want to experiment. I don't know. And then, of course, you know, I, but I'm attracted to someone who is like the most conservative person in bed. And I'm always trying to put stuff in his butt and all these places. And he wants <laughs> nothing. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I would totally be with Chuck. Like, yeah. All right. Cool. Let's I see what's going to go great. down with you and this hot guy in D.C. with great hair. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I mean, but she's trying to put me on. The, I don't want to raise no babies. I know. Take me. Like she doesn't Look, know later, yet. Later in the messages, I said, take my picture down off the refrigerator. I'm not coming over there. I'm not raising nobody's baby. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Have you heard from Chuck since this? Because this is like, has Chuck jumped in here? I mean, I'm feeling like, where is Chuck? Like, no, this is Chuck Chuck's was, responsibility. Chuck was, I was trying to diffuse the situation and offer some insight to them, you know, from my experience as being an out man, a man of the world, a man that has had some great experiences. Because I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't yeah. even think Chuck's bi. I think Chuck is... Totally gay. You think so? Yeah, I do. Because I think he's I think... bi. He still likes women. I mean, this is the thing. This is the thing. Okay, so you're in a marriage. You have a couple of kids, okay? Sex starts waning. Shit starts going left. Yeah. Then to try to save your your marriage that seems like it's kind of going off the rails, you decide to have an open relationship. Well, let me tell you something, women. It's a lot easier for men to go out and find a quick hookup. This is my opinion. Now, okay. they might say, yeah, I can do it, too. But not when you have to balance your job, your kids, this, the, that. So, basically, they had this conversation about having this open relationship. Within a week, he didn't met a man. He didn't met two women. I mean, the motherfucker's busy. Does she know about all those other people? Oh, my God. This could be a whole—you know what? From now on, I'm going first with my stories because yours whole top. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't even—I can't even get back to Philadelphia after this. What the fuck happened in Philadelphia? Nothing. The Liberty Bell on its best day isn't as good as this. You're never going first again. Well, so you know, I'm he out here living. Up with multiple people? Yes. He just met a woman last week. Oh I texted him. Oh, my God. I, you know, before all this shit happened, I texted him. I said, hey, have you had any hot sex lately? And he's like, yeah, I met this woman last week. And he says, but it's, you know, nothing that great. And then I said, okay, cool. And then, um, you know, he says, you're the only guy I like. And, you know, I like this woman. And, I, of course, I have my wife. And he says, and I'll never love any any of you all as much as I love my wife and kids. Oh boy. Oh boy. Are they so what's the status? Do you think they're getting divorced or do you think she's just well, venting with you? She was really really angry and she told him to sleep in the basement and she said she was going forward with the divorce and I think it's completely ridiculous. I think it's absurd and I think there were already issues in their marriage because when you decide to have an open relationship this early in your marriage there are issues that oh, you yeah, have to yeah, deal yeah. with. So this is like, why tuck the shit away anymore? It's all out on the table. Yeah. You yeah. know, talk about balls out. I mean, <laughs> literally. Oh, my God. Everything's out on the table. Paul, so uh, that is insane. <laughs> are you okay? I feel I'm like fine. that's a lot. So when did this all mind go down? You, this is just the other day. So I'm trying to... Um, I'm trying to help them through this, okay? I'm sending her all these messages. I can't believe you're, like, counseling them through I'm this. sending her all these messages. I'm getting, I'm talking her down off the ledge, and she's starting to come around, and she's understanding where I'm coming from. And I'm just giving her truth. Hey, lady, let's deal with the reality here. The reality is your husband is bisexual, period. What You, you right, think he whatever kept you from you, whatever. You better be lucky he found a motherfucker like me. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're cool about it. But I don't want him. Right. I was just trying to get... Have a good time. Yeah. Meet a new friend. Now, he's a very nice guy. I do miss having him as a friend. Well, you may be seeing a lot more of him. I don't know. (laughs) I think he's scared to call me because this is the thing. I'm finishing this interaction with her. I finally sent the last message that I was sure was the one that was going to save their marriage. Okay. We had finally started, me and her, we were seeing Middle ground, common ground. Yes. I'm screen capturing the messages and sending them to him so he knows... The conversation yeah. that I'm sending. Okay. That's a courtesy. Sure, that's good. And that's so good. he doesn't contradict because he told her that we had oral in a hallway, which wasn't true. He told her that he was wearing his wedding ring, which made me look like the floozy. That wasn't true. He wasn't wearing a wedding ring. Oh, my God. So I was sending him these messages like, look, motherfucker, I told the truth. and This is the truth. Yeah. Meanwhile, I had just about fixed it. And the last text I get back 
was her from his phone. She's reading his text messages, people. He was in the house with the woman, and he didn't tell me she was right okay. upstairs. Right. Does anyone else at this point, we need a live studio audience, because <laughs> is anyone at this point, I think you should be done with these people, don't you? I think they're honestly, they're you have fucking, anything to say about this, AJ? AJ, pipe it in, in here with, and, and Leslie too. Leslie's like so sweet. You know, she's like very religious, and you, you see Leslie at first, and you think she's so like Melissa, kind and sweet. Melissa, not the real name. Um, that's from his phone. Oh my God. But Leslie, by the way, Leslie's on all the websites too. She's checking out black China. She's looked at all these sex tapes. I always think, okay, well, I guess these uh, interns aren't so PG, (laughs) but we, is anyone else in the audience? Like, no, fuck them. You need to be done with them. I think they're dumping their shit on you. Like, oh no, I I said I was, no, listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. Chuck's an asshole. I hate Chuck. No, why do you hate him? Because he should never leave you out to fucking dry like this. Look, when I've had issues in my relationship and everybody knows I'm not perfect you own and that I've shit. had indiscretions, I didn't involve the other guy. I mean, yeah. come on. Like, you own it and it's between you two. All this fucking back and forth. I'd be like, Chuck, where's your ball sack that I was sucking on several weeks ago? Why don't you fucking get that out and talk to your wife? What? Yeah. I think they're using Paul. Does anyone else? Hey, guys, it's AJ. I completely agree. <laughs> All I want to say is they're involving you. You were this innocent person having a great night at Siren. And what are you going to say? Siren, I guess. <laughs> well, no, you don't You're have to too agree. much specific details, AJ. You're right. Forget the specific details. <laughs> okay, all but wait. I'm say. If you, what do you guys, what do you think? You don't have to agree with me at all. Do you think they're using Paul or do you think it's fine that Paul is like helping? I just can't believe. Using me? How would they be using me? Because I just think that they're, I think Chuck is using you as the buffer. As a scapegoat. It, well, yeah, I think not she's telling using the me truth. as a scapegoat. I think that she is projecting her anger. Well, she did in that moment. She projected the anger that she has. You can't sign up. And I asked her in those text messages. I said, are you in an open relationship? And she responded, not anymore. Basically, that's avoiding the, the conversation that I was trying to have. Right. Basically, you get into an open relationship, your marriage is in trouble. What would Goldberg say? You in trouble, girl. What she saying, ghost? <laughs> girl, you in trouble. Melissa, you in trouble, yes, girl. Yeah. yeah. Your marriage <laughs> is in is trouble. So so that's the thing that she wasn't really acknowledging that there was already an issue. But I think I really do feel this. I think as a woman, and I was going down this road, when you decide with your husband that you're gonna have an open relationship, and then they go out and within a week he'd been swinging from the chandeliers, and she may not have known about me, but she knew about I'm sure this other women or whatever, whoever. the other women, but that's got to be hard for a woman, a, a mother of young kids that is working full time and taking care of the kids. And, you know, you come home with all these stories just because you can have an open relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, God mm-hmm. damn. So within two weeks, she snapped. So well, I kind of get it. And I will tell you this from my relationship therapist who says that she counsels a fair amount of people who come in trying to have re- open relationships. They really don't work. Like yeah. you can recover from a- a cheating or an affair. Like people can actually recover from emotional affairs, physical affairs. But when it's an open relationship, she said it long term, it rarely works. It mm. rarely works because somebody it just it, you're like hooking up with so many people. There's so many moving parts that then somebody gets jealous and there's just so much more. Tip for tap. Yeah. So I don't know. But I want them maybe to save their marriage, and that's why I spent all that time going back and forth with her. I think that's that the marriage is, is worth saving. I think that they just need to be honest with each other from here on out about why they're in an oh. open relationship, what his true sexual orientation is, which he, I believe he's bi. You think he's gay, but I mean, I, I believe he's bi because why would he be still fooling around with all these other women? No, that's a good point. You know what I mean? I mean, I just thought that initially the messages that he sent you were... I, but I guess they were kind. They were more kind than maybe like I, I kind of thought he was like a little I mean, infatuated he's, with you. But. Oh, oh, he was lovely. I mean, he's a, he's a fun guy. I really do enjoy Chuck. He's a nice guy. Most one night stands. I mean, I've only had like two real one night stands. You really don't hear a lot from them. Like it yeah. usually it might be like it wasn't the a one night stand. I, I was yeah. intending for it to be because I wanted to have a little fun. I didn't think about that that day, but I hadn't had one in years. You hear what I'm saying to you? Right. Right. So I wanted to be like, look, let me have my little fun. And, and I was just, I was open to it and it presented itself. Unfortunately, he wasn't as available. Oh, as- my God. Okay, well, <laughs> Days of Our Lives will be back right after right, this. Exactly. <laughs> this is like, oh, my God, as the world show's over.
All right, well, well what who, does the audience think? I'd like to hear what they think about it. You guys need to email us always. It's Paul Wharton Style at Yahoo.com. Paul Wharton on Twitter. Paul Wharton Style on Instagram. It's at Hey Phrase. You can find me everywhere. Sarah at HeyFrage.com. Let us know what you think. Uh, we also have to say, give some love to our sponsors, DC Lottery. We love you. It's the place to be. The only place for me. Feeling that DC love. I got that DC love. So happy that is mine. The love is so divine. I'm feeling the DC love. I got that DC love, yeah. Love DC? DC loves you back with DC Love Scratchers from the DC Lottery, featuring cash prizes of over a million dollars. Now that's a lot of love. It's my celebration, my DC revelation. Feeling the DC love. Play the latest DC Love Scratcher celebrating Valentine's Day only from the DC Lottery. It's fun to play. Available where DC Lottery tickets are sold. Yeah, and Mervis Diamond Importers. Mervis Diamond. You know, just because uh, Valentine's Day is over doesn't mean the romance has to end. Check them out, MervisDiamond.com. Visit their DC store, 1700 K Street. They have the best diamonds. From three hundred bucks to as three hundred thousand, as, <laughs> as much as you're willing to do. And we have yeah. to say a huge shout out to our friend Jonathan Mervis, who Congratulations. is Ronnie Mervis's son, one of the owners. He just got engaged in South Africa. Did you see those pictures? I saw it. I'm so happy for him. I was too. I can't wait to see. Isn't that a lot of pressure? Like, I we need to get Jonathan on this because yeah, like, how does a diamond guy engage yeah. his uh, fiance? And like, that better be one giant ass ring, right? I like, looked right. Didn't you try to see? I did, but I couldn't see it. Could I you? I couldn't really see. I know. I'm like. When you have access like that, you better be getting her a massive ring. But they seem like really down to earth, like con- you know what I mean. She seems yeah, like she she's not into all that. Yeah, she doesn't. She seems right. lucky. Yeah. Right, exactly. I like I'm Jonathan. I've seen all your inventory. Right. Why don't you head back and get me something larger? <laughs> <laughs> you know? but anyway, uh, Bourbon Simon, and then also DateNightsDC.org. We love them. You guys know I love Washington, D.C. And you also know from following me and listening all these years that I love discovering new spots, which is why I'm obsessed with the website DateNightsDC.org. You need to get on and check it out right now. They have everything for the most romantic, perfect date night. And I don't know about you, but... Dan and I carve out time every single week and we have a date night. So I've been using this website all the time and I really like it. Not just because they have 100 plus date ideas, but they also have great deals as well. Hot restaurant recommendations. Yes, please. I'm all about that. Finding something new and fun and romantic. I tell Dan I want tons of romance tonight. Um, And that's exactly what you'll get when you go to datenightsdc.org. You'll find 100 plus date ideas, as I mentioned, hotels, restaurants, museums, attractions, and so much more. So for your next date night, be sure to check out their website and start doing date night right in D.C. Visit datenightsdc.org for more info. Okay, let's get to a couple of stories um, before we talk. I mean, I don't even, like I said, I don't have anything in my fucking yeah, life yeah. that matches that. I mean, yeah, what's going on with you? you? You say you went to Philly. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, okay. I want to talk about Watch What Happens Live, too. Yeah. I want to okay. give you the skinny let's on that, but let's like, talk about Philly. We'll do, oh, I, there's, <laughs> yeah, no. I know. You want to take, do a few stories? Yeah, let's okay. do a few. We need a, a break because I got to come up with something in my head that's <laughs> more interesting <laughs> than what really <laughs> happened. <laughs> um, okay, some news stories that we got to discuss. <laughs> Um, I thought this article was really strange. Do you think yoga pants are, and I thought this was really beneath the New York Times. Um, over the weekend, though, a story was trending about yoga pants from a female writer who says that basically women are wearing them to sexualize themselves when they go to workout classes and get attention. You think that's true? Get and attention nobody, from whom? Other people in other the Other people and other women. That it's become this whole sexualized Hot. thing. She basically says that everybody knows that sweatpants are far more comfortable to work out in, but the nobody wants those anymore because there's this whole industry of having to have these super tight, distracting yoga pants. Hmm. I, I mean, I, I I don't even like I don't even care about giving this story much time because I thought it was ridiculous, and I can't believe to me the New York Times posting this op-ed, which is an opinion piece. Mm-hmm was like babe.com without a Z's on sorry thing. Like okay. you're trying to make a fucking story out of nothing. Right. You know, I don't get sexualized at the gym. I mean, I don't find the gym to be a sexual place. Although I hear that some people do find sex at the gym. Mostly gay yeah. men, but. Oh, I want to do that. 
<laughs> yes. Right. Work out and get laid. I mean, it's like yeah, two birds. See, the, you remind me of all the people. Like, I used to have a coworker that I worked with at Fox who was bi-, bi, and he would always be like, oh, if you ever just want to come over and, like, have sex, we can just do that. And I was like, oh, I should have done that. Was he hot? Uh, yeah, he was kind of hot back in the day. Mm. Uh, you'll know exactly know who him? it is. Um, God, wait, can we, how do we, one. like, uh, you know, in this new studio, we don't have control of mics, but how do we, like, dip the mics up? <laughs> I'll tell you after. Yeah, tell me after. Uh, anyway, I thought they were. Is he still living in this market? No. Oh, shit. He's That's gone. Though. Yeah, different city. I'll show you who he is, though. <laughs> that narrows you'll, me. you'll know exactly who the person is. Nice. Uh, how do you feel about this guy? I'm honestly curious what people think about this. Um, so there's a, a guy that just died six months ago, and police came out this morning and said that the man who died in Yellowstone, falling off of a cliff, was hunting for treasure from a millionaire who says that he buried it. Okay? Jeff Murphy disappeared from Northern Gates Yellowstone National Park. The 53-year-old, according to his wife, had been searching for the $2 million treasure. Okay? That's supposedly out there by a multi-million who buried it reportedly in 2010. Uh, He is the third person, by the way, who has died trying to look for this eccentric millionaire's fortune. The eccentric millionaire, Fenn, is in his 80s, lives in New Mexico. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Red flag. What do you, so why do you think it's a red flag? All of it. What is this? Gilligan's Island <laughs> reboot. What is this? This it's sounds horrible. Island reboot. And if he and if they found the treasure, how are you gonna you just gonna roll out with two million dollars in gold coins? He says it's in a uh, forest. Uh, forest Fen is the guy's name. I guess if you found two million dollars in gold coins and treasure out in the woods, you'd you'd. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you wouldn't even how have any even cell reception. It? How do you carry it? Yeah, good point. I guess you'd know where it is. Anyway, this guy, this is my thing. Is like I hate that we're in this age of like outrage about everything and like oh you should sue everyone. But I'm just wondering how is McDonald's like how is McDonald's liable for hot coffee that spilt on a woman sued for multi millions? This guy who now th- three people have died in search for this may or may not be real two million dollar treasure. How have authorities not charged him with? Uh, I don't even know what is it when you like you don't murder the person, but it's like uh, manslaughter. Yes. Yeah. How is this guy, or how is they not shut this down or demanded well, that this guy his, actually what's prove his it's intention? real? Is his intention to kill people? I think that's the only way he can get charged. I mean, if oh, yeah, he's like right. setting this up, like I'm going to plant this story, and when they get to the end, they're going to fall off into the abyss. I mean, then he could get charged. He with something. claims that the whole thing is that he wants people to get outside and get off their cell phones and computers and experience adventure. That's his bullshit answer. But I'm beginning to call bullshit on this because I think, I don't know. I think there's something sinister about. And he wrote a poem, also I think is fucking creepy, who writes a poem over the age of 14. Okay. Like, I mean, that's what you had to do in middle school. Write a haiku. Who's a poet anymore? I need to get you out. I need to get you out more. (laughs) (laughs) You've been in this damn studio too long. Can anyone name a poet? There's a whole world out there. You know that, right? Robert Frost. That's the only poet I can name. You know a poet? Maya Angelou. But she was more like an author. And then she would like weave in a couple. All right, I'm going to give her a a pass because I don't think she was weird. I think poets are odd. Is Kanye West a poet? What do you consider him? But it would be so romantic to have somebody write you a poem. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, that is. I mean, Dan used to write me haikus when we first started, but then it's all stopped. He used to write you what? A haiku. What is that? You know haiku? It's like five um, syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, I think. (sighs) Like, dear Paul. Okay. I love you. Okay. Let's eat soup together. Okay. Uh Yeah, that was too many. I will suck your dick. <laughs> Get in line, baby. The long line of Pazzarelli's waiting for this beautiful piece of meat. <laughs> anyway, uh, last summer, 31-year-old Eric Ashby went rafting along with the turbulent stretch of the Arkansas River in Colorado. Weeks later, his remains were found several miles upstream. And in January of 2017, officials confirmed that he was another treasure seeker. Maybe I, it seems like I'm making a mountain out of a mohill. You don't think that this guy, this forest fen, has malicious intent? No, I do think he has malicious intent. Oh, you do? Intent. Well, I think that. I do, too. Well, I don't think that there's a treasure out there. I just don't. And it makes me sad either. that people would go to that length and risk their lives and leave their families on some, you know, uh, excursion to look for a treasure that may or may not be there. I I'm think it's you. terrible. I mean, shit, play the lottery. I agree. I know. Do something like play the lottery. Shit, scratch off until your heart's content. I know. AJ, did you have feelings on this? You were like shaking your head. Do you think, or do you think that we're making like we're? Yeah. I, I honestly, I, the time spent looking for the treasure. I think you could have made the money instead. 
Two million dollars? I'm not sure if you could make two million. Maybe not, but he wasted his whole life. Two thousand. So Maybe two thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to make two million. I don't care I'm when still I still How are you going to make two million? <laughs> Great question. I'm thinking about doing a Black China release myself <laughs> for twenty five dollars. <laughs> I really am. I really thought about. I'm like, do people want to see me giving a blowjob? Like, how much interest could I drum up for my sex tape? But I do not look attractive naked. You've seen me in a bikini, right? You look great. Okay, you're being sweet as a friend, and you want likes, because that's what? not true. <laughs> that is no, I adore you. No, well, I look like I've given birth to two children. I haven't had fucking one. I, I do, do not have a hot you body. Do? Yeah, and have you seen my bush? You have, and it's thick. The bush is a bit much. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's that bush attractive. scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, I was okay. like, oh, so that's what y'all do, huh? Do you know how Y'all hard- just let it go. You look good naked. I'm sure you've hooked up. And I've hooked up with some people that have gorgeous I bodies. I think I look better naked than with my clothes on, to be honest. Really? I, I do, because my skin's really smooth. Because, you know, I use all my face face product stuff all over my body. So, like, the stuff that people mm-hmm. don't you you know, because it's too expensive. But I have my own <laughs> line. So I have all the shit. So I put all that shit all over my body. And whenever oh people have sex with me, they're like, oh, my God, this body is like. Now, it's not like, you know, I don't have a six pack and all that. <laughs> but it's smooth. That shit looks good. See, I don't even know. Maybe I have pimples on my ass. Like, I don't take a I care don't have of myself. That. I exfoliate like my ass like every other day. See, I've got a look. Like, and you know, it, it is not attractive. You know how hard it is to be like a porn star? Like, all the angles. I would need so much. I would have to fuck in the dark and I'd have to do like Blu ray or something where you like the blue light just went over the bits. But with your mindful living work, don't you love all the imperfections and all the uniqueness of your body? I do, but do if I'm going to sell a tape, it's just going to. Like I mean, a there's little... an audience for everything, right? How hard is it to Photoshop my head on someone else's body? Look, and who's going to be the what's guy? What's your in intention it? in this? I'm being very Oprah at the moment. What is your intention? To make two million dollars. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I want to make sure you're focused. Boom. How are you making two? I don't well, know. Well, I think that um, for me, I am this year. I'm adding additional skincare products. I was and gonna I'm gonna say you're already on your way. I'm on my way. I'm adding hair care products. I'm doing a line of home products. I'm doing my collaboration with Alessandro Grimaldi. Uh, I want I'm selling one of those my TV jackets. movie, which we finished the script. We did the budget. We pitched it. It's I got the talent attached when Maybe I went to extras. L.A. And I just pitched two new reality shows, and I've got a um, whole deal with We on one of them, and I'm casting it right now in New York. Do any of these, or like, are there any roles for us? Like, is there anything we could do? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes. Like, no. He's yes, like, no. there are things you can do. Like Absolutely. What? Like, what's what's okay? Obviously, I don't want you to give away your premise because people steal ideas so much in okay. Hollywood for the reality show. But is there anything that you could tell us, like for a role that we could potentially audition? Well, for? the reality shows don't really have roles. I mean, they have main characters. You know, it's it's basically a younger version of Housewives. Okay. And all of the women have a relation to some famous people. I'll just say that. Ooh, okay, well, then we're fucked on that one. Okay. Fucked on that one. Now, the movie, however, if we shoot the movie in D.C., that could be good. I can't wait. Oh, my God. That I would love it. So I've, I've always wanted to play a secretary. To it, which I'm really excited about. And there's a couple other ones that, that we were talking to. Um, one who I think I love is Portia. You know, I was on Watch oh, What Happens Live so last good. week. Yeah, with her. You all know. I bartended, okay? So... I get there. It's all glam. It's all Bravo. Of course, I heard last week that y'all said I took my glam squad with me. Yes, thank you, Kelly and Janelle. And then AJ said, yeah, all two of them. Were you trying to read me? Get on the microphone. All I was saying was that nobody else has that type of glam squad, and it's impressive. Now, all two of them (laughs) sounded like a dig, but it wasn't. I have nobody. Okay. (laughs) Right. Trying to wait, save wait, myself, Paul, dig myself so out of the hole. Wait, when you're on network, don't they give you hair and makeup? Like, you just didn't want that? Like, for for Watch What Happens Live. He doesn't no, have a makeup? No, everybody has their own. What? So Watch What Happens Portia Live. Portia brought her own. The other, uh, Amber, um, what's her name? Tamblyn. She bought oh, her yeah, own. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. They didn't, they didn't bring them with them from, they were like local people. Okay, but they. So like, I'm the only diva that brought everybody with me. Okay. That is amazing. Well, your mm. makeup looked insane. I was so fucking Hollywood that night. Janelle did now, a great job. I'm glad that I look so good because I fucking said like one little thing. I mean, he he didn't give me any opportunity to say anything. For one thing, you know, I like Andy Cohen. I respect him. In the back of my book, he's one of my media inspirations, and I talk about that from a from a you know just from a career perspective. Right. But he was having an off night. Like, he wasn't very kind. I mean, I, you know, it's funny you say that. Now, mm-hmm. 
I've heard that he actually doesn't really have any time for women, which is ironic because most women watch what like Real Housewives. So I actually have heard that he's very much like when he's on camera with all the Real Housewives women, he's like friendly to them. But the minute it goes off, he could care less. And he's all about the men. He could care less about. Look, I mean, I'm <laughs> obviously that. not his type <clears throat> because uh, the guy who was doing Portia's hair was a hot like gay guy. And he was like, oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I met you before, before. I mean, he was, like, all about it. But, I mean, he comes in, you know, he was signing books backstage. You know, I'll just, the benefit of the doubt is he was doing that AC show the night before. Right, with Anderson. I've never watched. was but. late, all that, the, you know, he's running really late and all that. But, I mean, just in terms of, if that was my first time meeting him, I would, mm. I was a little disappointed that he wasn't nicer to, like, the people working there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he was signing books for some of the people in the audience, but backstage, he's kind of signing them. He was throwing them to the side. I mean, it just wasn't, you know, he didn't stay and take pictures with any of the audience members. Right. It's like he was out there, he sits, and then he, he rolls out. Yeah, I've heard that. I've always heard that about him. I don't even think he left before the audience left. I think he left, left the building. <laughs> he was like done. Okay. He was like off. They held the audience. I think he went down and he, he was out. How many people, are, by the way, are in that audience of Watch What Happens Live? I think there were about 10, 20, 30. I think there were about like 30 something. Really? That many? I didn't even yeah. think it was that many. Yeah, there were about 30. Well, you looked great. They cheers to you. You I hold up fantastic. a great cocktail. I'm in sure it. we sold a bunch of books. I mean, I was laid down amazing. with my Mervis Diamonds and my and my Kenny Kaz custom velvet suit and all my fabulousness. So, yeah, shout out to Kelly Simmons that did my hair and Janelle Gladden, my girl that does my makeup. They oh were my fantastic. God. Ro- and Kelly stayed with me all week. It looked, so, they did such a fabulous job. It looked amazing. Yeah. It looked great. Yeah, that was good times. Okay, well, uh, I'm still working on my Philadelphia story, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anything. Do you, uh, you have anything? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to hit a couple more stories. <laughs> How do you feel about this? You have a girlfriend that's a very good stand-up comedian that you're, yes. that you're friends with. Well, an award-winning stand-up comic is now being sued by her estranged husband, allegedly for defaming him in her show. The lawsuit, described by a leading lawyer as a test case for the very first one, relates to a show. Um, her stage name is Ray, but Louise Baymont is the comedian. I'd never heard of her. Hard Mode was billed as a provocative show. So Google just Hard Mode. And it explores censorship and surveillance, though one critic described it as being, quote, at its core about a very recent and raw heartbreak. Thomas Ray is now suing his soon-to-be ex-wife for breach of privacy and data protection and is seeking $60,000 in damage. Now, this comic is out of the UK. So it is a big, uh, a big first case. But can you believe this? If this goes through, she'll be the first comic to ever be sued by a soon-to-be ex-husband for essentially talking about him and, as this guy says, defaming him in her 50-minute show. I had no idea. I thought if it was your experience and you were involved in it, that you could tell that story. Isn't that hard to— But I think you can. I think you can sue anybody for anything, but whether or not they can prove that it wasn't lawful is a whole different story. Oh, but you know what I bet? Is he isn't a public figure? He is. No, he isn't. He's so not, I'm wondering yeah. if he's not. Is that why she can? Is that why he can sue her for defamation? I don't know. I think you can sue anybody for anything. Like you yeah. can sue anybody for defamation. But is it really? I mean, if, if it's her experience in her marriage, I think that she's got some right to that story. She has launched a GoFundMe page to pay for her legal bills. She's up to six thousand, trying to get to twenty thousand. The case could could have significant implications, though, for comedians nation worldwide who often use personal material in their shows the comedian and writer sarah mcmillan made her name and stand up with a material about her divorce that would be amazing because that's what most com- look at uh, chris rock did anyone mm-hmm. watch chris rock's recent special on netflix he talks about cheating on his ex-wife malak and how mm-hmm. he would come in the house and he felt like he could tell her what to do because he made all the money i mean he's like dishing serious dirt wow yeah yeah she got a good settlement from him though Oh, yeah. Do you think that probably for $100 million, uh, like, yeah, go on like, stage? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Get back out there. Tell the story. <laughs> That's really good. Well, you know, the interesting thing, you, you brought up my friend that's a comedian. I don't know what I need to go to your mindful living person or some kind of therapist because you have like 10. I'm I like, do. Like, I my do. relationship therapist, my yeah. mindful living. I'm like, God damn, I need yeah. to get one. Yeah, I but, know. I got to tell you, I'm having growing pains with my friends for some reason. There's something going on. And I know that feeling. I don't have any friends. You don't, okay, so that's what happens, huh? 
You just, they all go away? Well, I say to Dan, you know, this is why I went to Philadelphia, because I went with my dear, dear friend that I went to high school with, who mm-hmm. who's one of the couple of friends that I've really remained close with. But I often say to Dan, I don't really need a lot of friends. I say to Dan, you're my best friend. He tells me that I'm not his best friend, that his brother is, which I find very insulting. I'm like, how is this marriage going to work? We're not married yet, but I'm like, how is this going to work? I need to be your best friend. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm working on it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm saying, I say- I agree with him. All I need is Dan and like my friend Tia. And that's why she was one of the people that came to Philadelphia. So I was like, I got to go. Dan was like, you need to go. You need to get out of the yeah, house and get friends. Weekend. But I don't yeah. really have a lot of friends. My friend Sarah Hua, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, I have the, I have some, but it's but just what, not- what are the growing pains? What's well, going on? Okay, this is what happened. I'll just share this. So my friend- is a comedian, okay? She lives in Cleveland. She's a very, very good friend of mine. I met her by watching her on a comedy special on TV, and I just called her, and she answered the phone. And I was like, Aww. I'm having a party. She says, I'm on tour in your city. She came over that night. It was kismet. We've been friends ever since. But um, it was interesting because, you know, that week I did my book signing in Cleveland oh, two yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. I flew there on Wednesday to do press on Thursday. So I did the morning show on TV, and I did a radio show. Yep. And then I got back on a plane to come back to D.C. I did Fox 5 here, and then I had a book signing on yes. Friday night here. No, I had Crystal Couture and a book signing, and then I flew out that night okay. back to Cleveland for my book signing the next morning. Well, anyway, I was supposed to be staying with Karen. She's a really, really good friend of mine. I stay with her all the time. So on my way like to Crystal Couture, which I was from 5 to 7, I was flying at 8.30, she texts me and says, um, I hope this isn't an inconvenience, but I really can't have a house guest tonight. It's just too much for me. Okay. I'm like, Short notice. Okay. I just took two planes to Cleveland this week. Like, I'm running like a chicken with my head cut off. I mean, of course, there's hotels tonight. I'm a resourceful kind of guy, but that wasn't in the plan. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, what the fuck is going on with you? You have a five-bedroom house. What is happening with you where you can't have house guests? Like, I could do my own thing. What yeah. is going on? You know? So it's kind of, so that annoyed me. And then the next day she didn't come to my book signing because I wrote her back. I said, no, it's actually fucked up, you know, because I'm on this crazy yeah, schedule. And you planned on it. I'm going hour by hour trying to, like, I'm planning when I eat, when I have a cup of coffee. Like, that was the plan that week. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm just kind of like, it does kind of throw me off because now I got to find a hotel. I've got to do all that other stuff. And um, so she didn't like my response. She thought I should be understanding as a friend. That's what she said. She said, I think you should be more understanding. Uh, okay. So I said, well, it's fucked up and you inconvenienced me. So no, I, you don't get off the hook as you didn't inconvenience yeah. me. You did. I think that's weird. Yeah. You did. Yeah. I think and you're fair to say that. So the next day I said, oh, I hope <sighs> despite, you know, our whatever last night, because I try to be, as my dad says, son, you can always be magnanimous. Yeah, Meaning yeah, I don't have to really have the last word. I don't have to be right, and I fucking apologize when I'm wrong. So the next day, I send her a note saying, look, I hope to see you. It's a big deal. Cleveland is not where I live. Right. I'm anxious about selling books at Barnes & Noble there. By the way, we sold out. It was fantastic. But I didn't know that it was going to be, you know, I just needed my my crew. He didn't show up. He was like, oh, I need to rest my back. I'm going on a cruise tomorrow. Um, Have a great book signing. So yeah, are you just at this point where you're like, you don't, are you just like, if the friend isn't putting in the effort, you're like done? Or why are you like having a moment? Well, I'm having a moment because, you know, as a kid, and I think I've shared this story. Yes. I didn't have many friends. Right. Okay. I got friends later and then I got popular and then I started doing TV and then I had all these friends and then I had to figure out what to do with them. So when I finally got friends, they were like, you know, that treasure, that thing, that big, wonderful, shiny, sparkly thing that I never had. So I would hold on to them through thick and thin. Right. Some of them I should have let go of sooner. Sure, you sure. Know? So I put a lot of effort into my friendships. That compounded with the fact that I'm not in a relationship. Right. I'm always nurturing these friendships and putting time and energy into them. So she's one that I will, if if it's something for her, I'll fly to a show that she's doing in like right. Florida or something to support her. Yeah. But I find that as I'm really trying to come up, you know, there's like a point in your life, and maybe when you hit 40, you do this kind of thing. You're like, I better do this shit now. Yeah, right. So I'm Time on like is a of serious the essence. Hustle, yeah. And I feel like the more come up, it's just like the quieter it gets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, nobody called. That's odd. All the strangers are saying congratulations, but. Huh. Why aren't my dear friends? The crew didn't. Yeah. 
Really? That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. So, and she hasn't called me since. So it's like, okay, I reached out to mm-hmm. her the next morning. I apologized for the text interaction. I said, you know what? You're right. I can get a hotel. But it was an inconvenience. But yeah. I'm sorry for, and she's like, I have a nice book signing, basically. Damn. Okay, well, you know what? Here's my advice. Cut them off earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. Uh, look, we'll have like two more <laughs> stories here. Um, you know, I think we just wanted to talk quickly about, and this is like a bigger conversation we need mm-hmm. to have. Um, maybe maybe we need to have more of a, I'll find a therapist that uh, deals with boys and masculinity. But um, Parkland, Florida, of course, the killings of 17 children. There have been nationwide uh, teacher walkouts, student walkouts today. And then there's a big march that's going to be happening. I think it's like March, March 24th. 24th here mm-hmm. in D.C. Um for more gun control. And of course, President Trump yesterday had asked the attorney general to take measures to ban bump stocks, which essentially make a semi-automatic weapon automatic. Right. Do you have any thoughts on, I think the boys and masculinity argument is, and Michael Black, the comedian, basically came out and said, look, you want to know why a lot of these boys are shooting up schools is because it's toxic masculinity, that they're never allowed to grieve. They're never allowed to be upset. And this kid certainly, oh my God, so disturbed, the 19-year-old that Nicholas Cruz, the one that, that did all the killing. I mean, his mom died, his dad died, his his brother's now in a mental institution. I mean, the kid, you know, the guy had a terrible... Who was raising him? Past. I know his mom died and just recently. Like, basically, some people had taken him in. They said they were absolutely shocked that he was capable of doing what he was doing. Wow. Um, but anyway, so I, I just thought, do you have any... You know, we, I think we dealt with a little bit of gun yeah. control on this, but um, well, I'm all for Well, my thoughts are just sadness. Strict. I yeah. mean, you know, just sadness for the people that lost their lives, for the kids that are traumatized. I saw that Oprah had matched um, George and Amal Clooney's donation yes. for 500000 And then I saw somebody on Twitter say, Oprah, how can you compare these kids to the freedom fighters of the 1960s that were, you know, and I thought oh, what God, these kids have go. gone through. Yeah. They, their, their friends have been killed. Their teachers have been killed right next to them. But, you know, so it's just such a trauma and such a tragedy. I mean, I'll certainly be there marching on you March twenty fourth. Do you feel that Second Amendment right still? I mean, I, I, I don't think Second Amendment right is ever going away in this country. Ever, ever, ever. You know, I think right. The right... I think I think if uh, all of us black men band together and we all join the NRA like next Monday, yeah, and a million black men join the NRA and we all. Um, applied for our license to carry a concealed weapon, that motherfucker would come crumbling down. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what do you think that would happen then? They'd want to ban Second Amendment? Fuck like, yeah. <laughs> it was like a million, a black, million men. black guys with guns. A million black men sign up for the NRA, and then suddenly, that'd be a and moment. Only, Maybe you fact, should start that petition. In fact, brothers, I don't, we probably have about 10. Bro- how many brothers we got listening? <laughs> ten, Bro- brothers. Literally 10. Bro- come on now. <laughs> Ten is the number. Ten is the number. What we're going to do is, how much is it to join? Somebody find out. $15? Yeah, how much is it, AJ, to join the NRA? That's a great question. No, but really, I feel like it's, it's a, a, it's a idea, protected actually. group. And they, well, you know, and I'm a big NRA person. And by the way, Megan McCain is getting on my damn nerves on The View. I don't even watch The View. The View is so fucking bad. I mean, who wants to sit there and listen to Whoopi? And who's Me. that other one? I don't joy, even know, joy. I fucking love it. Sunny, I'm all about it. I mean, you know it. exactly what they're going to say. They're I all fucking liberal, it. but they always bring on the one blonde conservative, and then they just Megan trash McCain. her. They make her look like shit. And I'm not conservative. I mean, but I'm just sick of, first of all, I can't stand shows now with more than three people. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting older, it's but it's much. so many voices <laughs> yakking. I don't care yeah. what show it is. Mm-hmm. Queer Eye for the Straight Guy reboot. I, it's just too many fucking voices, right? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I only need to hear two or three people. Beyond that, whose opinion is really that different? No one. No one gives That's a true. shit. That's true. You, Joy or Whoopi, pick one. They're well, I both like the Whoopi same. Because I went to her house Boom. for Christmas. Joy, adios. <laughs> Who are the other two? I don't even know. Uh, Sunny Hostin and. Um, Who's that other former Good Morning America chick? She's like blonde and a mom or whatever. She's okay, like, fine. They always. She's like wallpaper. Wallpaper. Boop. boop gone. Boop. Sunny. Um, Whoopi Sunny, and Whoopi, and we Megan. need a token white woman. Yeah, token white woman. Okay. I guess Megan McCain. I don't okay. Know. Is she? I don't, I don't like her. I don't even follow her. Is she that smart or what's her deal? She's a big NRA person. She hunts, blah, 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 blah. Who the fuck is doing all this hunting? What do they do with these things that they catch? Do they eat them? Uh, have you ever had venison? Have you had deer meat? It's awful. 
It's absolutely Oof. gamey. It tastes like sticks. Like you, honestly, if you soak sticks in water, boiled it, and then you made it into like a puree, it tastes the same as venison. I think it's no fucking Horrible. reason. You know, I, mean, I haven't had meat since the first of the year. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, you're like me vegan. That's what <laughs> they were calling me over the weekend. You're a vague vegan. I was like, oh, I'm a vegan. Vaguely. Vaguely vegan. vegan okay, yes, I like it. All I'm going to say is this, because people say, well, you know, if you guys are going to talk about it, no one ever offers a solution. I love your solution. I think a million black men should join the NRA. That would definitely get their attention. Mm -hmm. And two, I think, you know, my solution in reading about this is age to buy a gun should be 21. And really the issue is a lot of gun sales between um, private sales, between people go unregistered. They got to figure that out. Uh, and then lastly, they also, a lot of these people do have mental health issues, but because the system is so slow in registering somebody who has a mental health issue, like the FBI, right? Nicholas Cruz was on their list. They hadn't communicated that to local law enforcement. They never followed up. I mean, there's got to be some system that the minute someone is called to your house for a mental disturbance, police come, FBI come, CIA, whoever the fuck comes out, and it's like, this seems a little off. It's got to be registered in a national database. Yeah, but you know, I remember back in high school days, I, you know, there were a few kids that I still yes. remember that I was like, uh oh. And, you know, we didn't have Columbine back then. It came a little after that. Um, but just a few kids, I was like, oh, God, they seem a little troubled. But you almost can't really say that. And you can't call people out for mm. the way they look, the way they act. I mean, there's all sorts of protections in place so that, you know, for a good reason a lot of time. Right, right, right. So people can't discriminate, but it's that fine line of like, well, at what point do you need to like tell somebody that someone's off? Because now they're asking, well, didn't anybody suspect? Well, yeah, he said he was going to kill our parents, but I mean, you know, they were saying that about the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he threatened that other kid that started dating his ex girlfriend, and he said, "I'm going to kill you." And uh, yeah, I mean, I it, it's very scary. I think we'd also love to know your thoughts. You can always email us, Sarah. Oh my god, I'm sure they'll Paul be e- emailing a lot today. Um, Last story, I know, they'll have a lot to say. I love this guy that went on Tinder, put up a PowerPoint of why you should date him, and every time you swiped right, he basically gave details. He wrote, the struggle, only child, um, tequila enabler, not a morning person, competitive street fighter, taboo professional, uh, can't really swim or bike. He's cute, isn't he? The perks, uh, overcommits to Halloween, consistently has chocolate on hand. All right, I'm all about that. All right, does it sound good to you? Uh, Yes, it sounds Would you swipe right? Yeah, I would. I'm I'm currently swiping. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my headphones. I'm currently swiping right on the guy on Tinder that says, I'll kiss you like Tom Brady kisses his son. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a hard on killer. I love that. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yes, that's a passionate kiss, baby. Uh, where are you going to be this weekend? You're going to be out. Yo, politics and prose at the wharf. That the new oh, bookstore that's a really at good the one. wharf. It's a good one. I'm doing a book signing this Friday night at 7 p.m. It's going to be fun. Come out and get a copy of pulling it all together love it uh my philadelphia weekend went like this okay because it's so boring i went to philadelphia on mega bus which you would never take have you ever been in a public bus <laughs> okay okay I, I, I have i'm sure but not in recent times <laughs> no no i mean because i have like this thing i'm like one guy is gonna get me there like what if he goes off the road I don't oh like it's it. awful i have a terrible i actually took the new york bus once and i woke up to a man eating ramen noodles driving with his knees at 85 miles an hour on the eastern bus and i was like that is it i'm fucking paying the extra ten dollars to get on mega bus he seriously was he was completely What's the difference driving well i think that <laughs> like the mega bus explodes less than the Easterns. yeah okay and they usually discourage you from There's eating no pilot that's a problem for me <laughs> Oh, like, <laughs> took Megan bus up. A yeah. uh, girlfriend there wants to know if she can contact her her ex husband about his future wedding. I say no. You no. say no. I say no. Um, two guys in the street woke us up on Saturday night. They were arguing about why people are wearing costumes to Black Panther. I went to Pat's, had a cheesesteak. It was the worst fucking thing I ever ate. Okay. All right. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ah, <laughs> <Show's> over. <laughs> ah, uh, we do also oh, be looking. We've got a waxing the city party. Oh, were... wait, where's that going? That? I don't know. Why was that? I was not playing. Sorry. Um. Okay. Wait. Now it's not playing. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. Okay. Right. <laughs> hey, wait. Hold on. Do we have a producer for this show, <laughs> or, or is it just us? Best right. right. us. Um, and we have a Wax in the City party. March 8th, Wax in the City. Oh, that's going to be good. For men, right? For men, yes. Come get your manzillion. Come get that thing right. Back waxes. Mm-hmm. Chest waxes. Manzillions. I love it. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Woo! 
tune in, yeah, you gotta tune in. Sarah Frazier on the mic and she about to begin. The co-host with the most Paul one looking fleek. Take it from me, you should be listening. Live from the nation's pad, pop culture at its best. No need a second guess, separated from the rest. Entertaining nonetheless, many topics to address. Sarah, she's so glamorous, the number one hostess.